Hey, what's up you guys? Today I'm starting a new vlog in my series of reading my friend's favourite books. All these friends are other booktubers and today I'm talking about Michelle from Thor What's Another Letter. She is a Native American booktuber so the three books I have chosen are all Native American authors and she's also the host of Indigathon which is a readathon in November which is about reading literature from Indigenous authors and I have chose three Native American authors from her list of favourite books of 2020 and I'm excited to give them all a try. I have never read any of these authors before and one of them I think is his debut book so that'll be really fun and you know if it's Michelle loves them and she gives them five stars then chances are I'm gonna also love them and also give them five stars. That's what I love about these videos like you go in with such high expectations because you know like if they're someone's favourite books then it must be good and obviously I love like exploring my friends different tastes and stuff so I'll have the playlist of my other videos in this series down below in the description. I'll also have the links to Indigathon and all the information for that although chances are it'll be over by the time this video goes up because this is gonna go up right at the end of November probably. Depends on if I see the books. I might actually get them fast through them pretty fast because two are middle grade and one is an audiobook so who knows this vlog <laughs> might fly through we'll I'll just have to wait and see. So if you enjoyed this video please leave a like also definitely check out Michelle's channel I should definitely mention that it'll be linked in the description also lots of links in the description but yeah please leave a like if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe if you're not already and also subscribe to Michelle and let's get started talking about the first book that is Michelle's favourite. Hey honey, what's Jay Midgard? My name is Michelle from Throw Once Another Letter and today we're going to be talking about like 20 books that I really loved in 2020. This is just a quick clip that I've thrown in here to say that during my discussion of Race to the Sun, I keep saying like Navajo or something. It's pronounced Navajo, obviously. Like once they said it in like one of the audiobooks I read later in the vlog, I was like, obviously it's pronounced that way. But I had just never heard it pronounced and I read it on the page and said the wrong pronunciation. So I apologise, it's Navajo. So the first book I'm going to read for this video is Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse and I'm excited for this because I've never read anything by Rebecca Roanhorse and she's obviously very popular on booktube. I've only more heard about her adult stuff, I don't really watch channels that review her middle grade or review middle grade, sorry, in general. But I have heard that she's a really, really great author so I'm excited for that. Also I just never read middle grade in general so it'll be fun to try something pretty new, different, pretty new. This is about a 12 year old girl who has the power to see when monsters are disguised as people and she sees that her dad's new boss is actually a monster in disguise and he is very interested in her family's history and their culture as part of the Najabo people who are a Native American tribe and she tries to warn her dad about this and he doesn't believe her and then her dad goes missing so she has to go on an adventure with some other people to try and rescue him. Uh, I think it sounds pretty interesting, pretty fun. Obviously Michelle loved it, which is why I said in this video. So I think I'll fly through this pretty fast. It's only about 300 pages. Text is kind of small, but you know, it's middle grade, so I'm pretty sure I'll fly through it. Fingers crossed. I think it sounds quite, quite fun. It definitely reminds me of Percy Jackson Away, and this is part of the Rick Riordan Presents series, which I'm assuming means that all the books are kind of similar themes. They all deal with supernatural and the monsters and history and that type of stuff. Because obviously Rick, you know, the Percy Jackson books are like Greek myths. So yeah, I think it sounds pretty fun and I will come back with an update once I have read some of this book. Number 8. Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I really love this because it has siblings in it. There are a lot of like native references. Um, there's a part that I really... Hello, it's been a couple days and I am halfway through Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I am enjoying this as much as I could enjoy middle grade, I think. Like, it's not really impressed me that much but I'm definitely enjoying it but also at the same time like I put it down for two days and like didn't really have motivation to pick it back up but when I am reading it I am like enjoying reading it so you know it's not bad it's definitely just like you know I'm not really a middle grade reader like I'm not even that much of a YA reader anymore I prefer adult so it's different but like I think it is really good like it's really well written I really like the characters actually and it's a fun way to learn about you know this culture and their mythology and traditions and some words and stuff and I'm really liking that. I think that aspect of it is superb and I really think that Rebecca Roanhorse is doing a great job mixing in those elements with like the typical kind of middle grade story to the point where it is unique because of these aspects but it's also like your typical kind of middle grade adventure story. I've actually been taking um, some little notes just so I can remember what to say. So I wanted to talk about the parents, the main character's parent, her, sorry, main character's mother is dead and her father, before he goes missing, is quite neglectful, quite focused just on himself and doesn't really listen to his kids and stuff like that. 
And it was like the most frustrating scene ever where obviously something happened because she seen that his boss was a monster and then she's trying to make him believe her and he's like, basically just thinks she's delusional and doesn't trust anything she's saying. And it's so frustrating like when that happens in books because like adults obviously just never believe kids in books. And it's so sad. I hate that that happens. Like I understand that in real life it's probably the same, but I don't know, like stuff like that makes me sad. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, just trust your daughter. Like she's very visibly upset, like because someone apparently attacked her. Like your boss attacked her, and she, you're like, you're being delusional. Like stop lying. Oh, that annoys me. I also though, um, on like a positive side, there is a talking animal companion, and I love him. I don't want to really say anything. I don't want to spoil much, but he is just so fun. And you know, I think there's gonna be a bit of a darker side to him. There's like a hint of a darker side, so that'll be fun as well. And the fourth one was also like, I found out that her brother also has powers. That's not really mentioned in the back, I don't think, but uh, her brother also has powers. So she can see monsters and he has his own thing and that's also really cool. And he's not really had the chance to use them yet, but I'm sure he will coming up in the future, especially like in the finale kind of area of the book. So yeah, overall, I actually, I'm enjoying it. It's just like, it's definitely not gonna be a five star read for me. And I think if I was going to rate it on a scale of like every other book that I read, I'd probably give it three star right now. But factoring in the fact that it's middle grade and I don't really read middle grade, I think I will give it a four star. Like I think it does deserve a four star. But obviously I'm only halfway through. I'm like exactly halfway through. I'm on page 152 and there's like 298 pages. I'm like basically exactly halfway through. So yeah, good start to the vlog. Definitely enjoying it. And I'm glad I'm giving it a chance. Like obviously I would never normally pick up a book like this because it is middle grade but um it's definitely really fun. I have just finished Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse and this was a solid four stars. I actually did really enjoy it. I thought all the characters were really fun and unique and they all had like their little special skills and stuff and I mean obviously I don't think middle grade is for me. Like this basically reassured me that you know it's not something I'm totally interested in. However reading you know just one every once in a while it's kind of fun and i do like the writing style I like how easy it is i also think that you know in terms of it being a uh, story for native american kids it's excellent obviously rebecca roanhorse herself is native american and i think that if i was and i was reading this especially at like the intended age i would absolutely love it i would adore it i think that just the way that it encapsulates the culture and the language and everything along with this fun adventure story is so great and I think it was really well written and I don't really have any complaints about it at all to be honest it's just like the reason it's not a five star just because I'm not a middle grade person and you know obviously there's like no real stakes and stuff like that <laughs> um, but I loved the ending it was like a really nice happy ending happier than I would even expect like everything worked out so perfectly but not in really a contrived way like it made sense and I just thought like overall it was just a really nice book so I would definitely recommend this if you do like middle grade or if you are buying a book for a middle grade reader, you know, someone of ages maybe. I don't even know what middle grade is meant to be ages for, like maybe like 9 to 14, 13, 14? I don't really know, but it was fun. I would definitely recommend it and I'm happy that I finally gave Rebecca Bonehorse a chance. I would be really interested to read some of her adult books and compare because obviously I'm sure her writing style is completely different in adult books compared to middle grade books. But yeah, as a first book for this vlog especially, I'm really happy it was this one. That part just like really got to me because um, like Native American families have like such as high, um, this like really high sense of community. <sighs> Sorry, I'm getting kind of emotional. Um. Hello, so I'm in my car, so I'm just doing this very quickly, but I'm about to start the audiobook for Winter Counts, which is a thriller about a guy who is a vigilante, he's Native American, he lives on a reservation, and when the local police won't do anything, he kind of takes over and takes charge, and when heroin makes his way onto the reservation, and I think his nephew or something becomes addicted, or maybe dies, I'm not sure yet, he really takes it personally obviously and goes on a mission to find out where the heroin is coming from and how to make it stop and it's also about him reclaiming his Native American ethnicity and identity and stuff like that so it sounds really fun and it's an adult book which is good because not gonna lie I actually do really like Race to the Sun but I'm just struggling with it because I'm just like struggling to stay gripped I guess 
But this still will be interesting and also it's an audiobook which will be nice to change up. I love an audiobook recently and I hope it's really good. I think it will be. I have high hopes for this one. I think this one could potentially, out of the three books I'm reading for this vlog, this one has the most potential to be a five star, I believe. So, I will keep you updated on my progress. It's only eight hours, so I listen to audiobooks sometimes too, so it's only four hours. So it shouldn't take too long at all to listen to. And yeah, hopefully it is great. This is a vigilante story um, with Virgil, and he's a badass. He beats the shit out of people for a living. Full-on cussing happening here. So if you're a youth and you don't like to hear me cuss, just get out. Get out. Hello, so I am happy through Winter Count, and I am really enjoying it, I think. It's very dark and gritty, like it's exactly what I was expecting, and I really like all of the characters. Our main character, Virgil, I think his name is. Uh, I'm so bad with character names, I don't know a single character name ever, apart from like Bella and Edward. But anyway, yeah, he is kind of like a tough guy, kind of, you know, a bit rough around the edges, but with like a really lovable heart, like always looking out for the people that he cares for, like his family and his close friends and like his community. Like, although he is like a bit of a bad egg, it's for like a good reason, you know what I mean? Like he has like a sympathetic background and stuff and he's just trying to do the best that he can for the people around him and his family and I really like him. I think that his motivations are, you know, very obvious and so his nephew, I think I said in the bit, like his nephew dies, he doesn't die. <laughs> his nephew like has a drug overdose and then it's like Virgil trying to like hunt down the people that caused it and stuff like that. But I'm really liking it. It's not really a thriller. I guess it's more of a mystery. Like I thought it was gonna be a thriller, but I would call it a mystery uh, more than a thriller. But either way, it's really good. I'm enjoying it. Don't think it's gonna be five star. It's definitely gonna be like a four star. But I'm glad that I'm giving it a chance. It's really great, and I would highly recommend it so far. Obviously, I'm only about halfway through. I'm closer to like three quarters of the way through. But yeah. Anyway, what else do I have to say about it? Um, audiobook was definitely a good choice for it. The audiobook's good. Really like the narrator. So. Highly recommend the audiobook. And let me just have a think. Oh yeah, so the other thing I was thinking of is that I'm quite excited to actually read the children's book that's set on the reservation. It's all about like stories and stuff of people like on a reservation. Because I feel like in all adult literature, it makes like reservations out to be like the most depressing places ever. And that's obviously not true. Like obviously there's a lot of crime there and stuff, but there's also a lot of happiness, a lot of families like just being themselves and stuff like that. So I think it'd be nice to read about like happy reservation stuff because although obviously I mean it's a bit it's like everywhere like every single place on planet earth has good and bad and like I think a lot of the adult literature that I've read it's about not just Native Americans but just indigenous people in general focuses on the more negative sides of the reservations like the poverty and the crime and stuff like that whereas obviously there is also a lot of like happy people there like happy memories and stuff so I think it'll be nice to read the children's book Although, obviously, because it is a children's book, it'll be a bit sugar-coated, I assume. But I just think that'll be nice because, like, the book, the Rebecca Roanhorse one, the kids and stuff there didn't live in a reservation. They just lived in, like, a normal suburb. So, yeah, I think it'll be nice to have, like, that contrast of, you know, life's not all bad. <laughs> and they're just like any other place, really, where there's good and bad. I just finished Winter Count a while ago and I did like in the end, I gave it four stars. I was going to give it five stars, I kept going back and forth. If I was doing half stars it would be 4.5 but it was just a couple of things that I was like not in love with. For example, the relationship, the romantic one between Virgil and Marie. I just thought it was kind of like a little bit flat. I felt like the writer, or sorry the author, <laughs> the author used the fact that they had a past before the events of the book to kind of just skip to them being back together and I don't know like something about the relationship I just didn't love but overall I did really enjoy it I loved the family relationship I loved his relationship with his nephew and like how you know obviously he's a super tough guy but he will do anything to protect his family and I liked learning more about like the reservation and stuff I know I said in my last clip I think it was about how I wish there was like some more positive stuff shown and we did get some of that we got someone who was really trying to like motivate all the people to eat healthy. We got someone trying to like secure government funds for different projects and we got like a real sense of community and like community trust and stuff like that going on which I love. So I liked that eventually we did get that balance of like good and bad because I mean you already just seen my last clip. I was like not annoying me but I just like wish that we had a little bit more positive about reservations but anyway 
I don't want to repeat myself. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed Winter Counts overall and I would highly recommend it. I listened to an audiobook, obviously, and I think the narrator done a great job. And if you like audiobooks, I think I would definitely recommend this. One thing I will say also as well is that I think it's listed as being a thriller and other people have done as a mystery. Out of the two of those, I would definitely go more for mystery. It's definitely not a thriller in my opinion. I would generally just say it's a crime book, but I guess mystery kind of works, kind of. A little bit. There's a couple of twists actually at the end that kind of took me off guard. Uh, I was surprised by one of them especially, so that was cool. But yeah, enjoyed it. Four stars, 4.5 stars. Up in here, Henry went over there and beat the shit out of him. That's what I used to hear growing up. That's what I used to hear and I didn't think anything of it. And then this book happened. This book happened. And I read it and I was like, oh my god, that's what vigilantism is. So the final book I'm going to read for this vlog is Ancestor Approved Intel Tribal Stories for Kids and this is a bunch of different authors and they've all brought different short stories together into this one collection and I think like the overarching theme is that it's all of these Native American families at a community centre exchanging stories with each other and I think it sounds really nice. I think it'll be really fun and light-hearted and obviously Winter Counts is quite a heavy, dark, serious book so this will be like a nice end to the vlog, a nice light-hearted end and it'll be quite fun, I think. I haven't really read any modern kids' books, like, since I was a kid, to be honest. I mean, recently I read, like, Peter Pan, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, like, the Narnia books and stuff like that. But, like, now, like, the reading level for them is much higher than, like, typical kids' books today. But I've decided to actually listen to this on audiobook as well because I'm just really struggling with physical books right now. I just have no motivation to pick up physical books. So I want to finish this vlog before the end of November so I thought you know what I've got audible credits I'll just do the audiobook and hopefully it's really great so I will let you know my thoughts I don't know if I'll update in the middle for this one because it is really short the audiobook on times two is only three hours so I think I'll probably just update you at the end but we'll see this this is the kind of powwow that I've always wanted to go to this is the kind of gathering and family and this is this just fulfilled all of my this just buttered my whole bun the whole bun just slathered it just slathered i keep trying to film this clapping and keep sneezing so hopefully this works i just finished ancestor approved intro tribal stories for kids and i really liked it i have a lot of correction so in my last clip i said that it was a bunch of different families or a community center or something like that comparing stories or like telling stories to each other that's not really true it's all stories based around powwows and what goes on there so like the dancing the culture the food the family the relationships like selling things like all that stuff and powwows sounded so fun like i would love to go to one just after reading this i think that they sound just like the best time ever and i loved like the tone of the book how it was all very light-hearted and really like just made everything sound really fun but then it also dealt with some serious topics like bullying loss family stuff, uh, like, I don't know, just like personal really, um, like feelings, things like that, I don't know, I just really liked it, I think that it balanced a really nice tone within, or like racism was also tackled, so um, you know, some serious topics but overall like a nice fun atmosphere and I just really liked it. Some of my favourite stories were Alan's Story and Kevin's Story by, by Brian Young, These, this was the same story kind of, but like told from like two different boys' perspective and one of them is actually a bully of the other in school but they have to come together and form an unlikely <laughs> friendship uh, like temporarily to fix something and I just really liked like seeing the way that it worked out with you know them coming to terms with each other and understanding each other's differences and stuff like that I just thought it was really nice and obviously it's the same story but from like two different perspectives so it's like a little bit repetitive but in like a fun way because you're getting like the other person's thoughts and then the other one I really liked was Little Fox and the Case of the Missing Regalia by Erica T. Worth. And this one was really unique. It was a bit of a mystery and it's all about like someone's stolen someone else's regalia and this little fox is trying to work out who it is. So it's, I don't know, I just thought that one was really unique and fun. Because one little complaint I do have is that because so many of them focused on dancers and like people being too shy to dance or not knowing how to dance or being feeling too old to dance and just a, there was a lot of focus on the dancers. A lot of the stories felt very similar, like none of them bored me, like they were all entertaining but just like a few of them felt really similar. So that one was like really fun because it stood out a lot from the others. But overall I just really enjoyed all of them and I would highly recommend this book. Like I thought it was like such a nice one just to listen to and I think that would be better if I listened to maybe even like one story a day. 
or something like that instead of like sitting and listening to them all because then you wouldn't feel like that repetitiveness probably but yeah overall really liked it we have ancestors approved he was the one that got this for me and it came with a book plate um it was like book art i mean it was absolutely wonderful it's gorgeous five fucking stars um excuse my cussing but it deserves five fucking stars so so that's my video reading three books by my friend Michelle. Please check out Michelle's channel down below. I'll have the link. She is amazing. She's so funny. She's so nice. Like just one of the nicest people on booktube and highly, highly recommend checking out her channel and also recommend checking out these three books, obviously. I will have all my links down below for anything I've talked about. And I actually think I'll link my Goodreads reviews for these books down below as well because I think my Goodreads reviews are more you know, like eloquent. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, please subscribe, and also subscribe to Michelle, and I will see you in my next video. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself, and I can't wait to see you back here later, okay? Okay? Okay. Bye!